Hey, my name is Benjamin. Last year, my brother and I challenged ourselves to make a monster training game in two months. From that challenge, Demon Luck was born. We officially launched the game into Alpha about 10 weeks after starting the challenge. The feedback from the Alpha encouraged me to continue working on the project. Welcome to this Demon Lock devlog. Demon Lock is a tactical demon training RPG. In this devlog, I'll tell you how I added procedural level generation and a minimap into the game. If you've played the Demon Lock Alpha, you'll know that the game has an area called the Void. This area is where wild demons live. You can venture into this area to battle these demons and collect essence, which is later used to summon them. In the Alpha, we didn't have time to make the Void procedural. Instead, we created one level and randomized the start, end, and item locations in that single level. This gave enough randomness to the level to get a general idea of what the Void would be like without all the work of actually creating a procedural level generation system. It was good enough for the Alpha, but not for the finished game. I wasn't exactly sure what kind of level generation I would need. The Void is another dimension. It's the dimension of the demons. I knew I wouldn't be able to use the classic rooms and hallways used when generating dungeons. It needed to feel natural and wild, not constructed. As a starting point, I looked into cave generation and discovered cellular automata. I'd heard of cellular automata before because of Conway's Game of Life. It's the most famous example. But I didn't know that it had other uses. I found a super helpful article that walked me through an algorithm for generating caves. I quickly wrote up some code using 2D arrays and some simple cave generation. It was working, but it had a few issues. The first issue was that it was slow. I found out later that I could have used pool arrays for better performance, but at the time I didn't know this. I didn't want the player to have to wait very long while the level was being generated. Second, and more importantly, there was no easy way to define the start and end path or have a guaranteed path between them. Often games that use this kind of level generation let the player mine through the level, creating their own path. The third issue, in order to get good results, I had to make the levels pretty large. I didn't want to have huge areas to explore, I wanted a sequence of smaller areas. Because of these flaws, I discarded the idea of using cellular automata to generate the levels. This led me to pre-made rooms. I decided to look at other games. The first example was Spelunky. Spelunky is one of my favorite games. It uses pre-made rooms with some random elements and combines them into random layouts. This seemed like it would be a pretty good starting point for me. The thing is with this type of random level generation, there's not like a set algorithm. It's kind of arbitrary. As a designer, you sort of pick something, some random rules, and try it and see if it's gonna work for your game and the type of levels that you need. I decided to start with images. I'd been messing around with reading and writing pixels to images because of a tutorial by Game Endeavor. My first idea was to have one small image for the layout, where black was for the areas without rooms, White would be areas containing rooms, and blue would be for areas containing rooms that had a start and end location. Next was to use images for the rooms in the layout, these predefined rooms. Here is what those looked like. White is the ground, black is a wall or an area that you can't explore. Blue is the start or end position, depending on where the room is located. Yellow is an item, green is an encounter zone. Each of these rooms would need walls for the sides that didn't connect to other rooms. For the walls, I had to be able to differentiate between the different directions like north, south, east, and west. So I used a different color for each wall. Blue for north, red for west, green for south, and yellow for east. This allowed me to combine the layout image with a few room images, rotate and mirror them all randomly to add some variation, and create the level. I started getting some pretty interesting designs and I was pretty happy about it. A problem that came from this though was that some room designs, the more open ones, when connected with more closed off hallway type rooms, 
would leave awkward hallways on the edges, making the quadrants of the layout more obvious. So you could kind of see where the squares of the layout were, where the rooms were connecting. Luckily, I had a solution for this. Because of the work with Cellular Automata at the start of the video, I realized that I could smooth those areas out and remove them. I modified my Cellular Automata class to work on images and applied the simulate step function to the level and it removed those awkward hallways. Here are some of the final results. The funny thing about this is that all of this work was being done on an image. My initial idea was to have these different images, read from them and combine them in interesting ways. So I was actually creating an image for the final level. Then I would use that image to build the actual level with tile sets and with the nodes for the player and the items. Because I had an image for the final level already, I decided to use that for a mini map. So I added an image to the corner of the screen and stuck a mini-map there and put a location for where the player is in the world and I had a mini-map from the image that I generated for the level. In the end I was really happy with how the level generation turned out. I can add more room layouts and more pre-made rooms to add even more variation to this system. I hope you enjoyed this devlog. If you're interested in taking part in the next alpha, be sure to sign up for the Demon Lock mailing list. My work here on YouTube and on this game is made possible by the people who support me through my Godot course. I'll leave a link to that here in this video if you're interested in checking it out. I appreciate all the support from everyone and I will talk to you all later.